In Boiling Point, we're going to be opening up the discussion to uh, the uh, frankly vast audience um, and uh, to see who's got any burning questions or comments that they would like to address to our guests or, uh, yeah, or to uh, the room in en general. Yeah. Okay, so concerning the, <coughs> the, correct me if I remember, the first question was why is art education necessary? Why is an art school necessary? So, many people there spoke about economy and I wanted to point out that the, an art education is necessary because it gives jobs to so many teachers <laughs> and, and so many administrators and the buildings and, the, and all of that. I think this is the most immediate uh, consequence of an art school. You can say, look how many jobs we create. And uh, another thing is that it creates kind of hordes of um, workers that work for free, which is very useful for the art market to use them <coughs> in the... Like you, you can do like a piece with 80 people and pay them basically nothing. Um, yeah. So you would say this makes it necessary, or this is a this is a motive? Do you mean? I think it's a need. The the art education answers. So why is why is it there? We need it because we need jobs. We need people who work for free. Would anyone on the panel like to respond? I think sort of I find it a touch cynical. Uh, statement, but you're <coughs> probably some of it's right. Um, I think any kind of, you know, it, there was a big debate in the 60s about critical, uh, whether you could teach creative writing in America. And for many years, uh, people, the, 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 the argument was perpetuated that you can't teach creativity, you can't teach creative writing, you can't institutionalize that this is intuitive, it comes out, it's somehow. Um, is somehow something that is given to you by some sort of uh, um, uh, uh, übermenschliche, what do you call that in English now? Some sort of like, uh, 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 some sort of <laughs> other being, or it is into you, the sort of 19th century in the idea of muse and uh, whatever. So, but <coughs> creative writing has been established now for sort of 65 years in America. Uh, and I would say at a considerable amount of uh, uh, art institutions. Uh, and quite a considerable amount of the people coming from those are people who are on the Booker Prize, Booker Man Prize list, Pulitzer list, or whatever, who have also been there and uh, said at least this, that uh, um, if not, one doesn't learn how to write creatively directly, one has to, one can learn how to one teach oneself uh, within that context, within a, an environment how can set up? How can one set up a, co a, con a conversation about what it is uh, that you want to do yourself in relationship to other people? So, uh, and in this context, then it really has quite influenced not only creative writing schools but a lot of creative art school situations. We probably know that a lot of rock and roll bands that uh, we famous rock and roll bands of the late 80s and 90s, like from Sex Pistols or the Beatles or something like, are the graduates of art schools of visual arts schools, not of music schools, but of visual arts schools. Um, that the art schools themselves combined as sort of uh, not only a need to provide jobs, I don't know there's that many statistically, that many jobs in art school education market. Um, it certainly has expanded, but um, the fact is that, that to be able to collate a certain amount of needs to be able to channel some this creativity and to be able to do it in a way that gives you a political uh, uh, momentum that you can actually argue that this is equally important in in the broad educational context as any other as academic fields that the art education is of itself permanently in danger now, even here in Berlin at the moment in the school system uh, art education music education is being attempted to be reduced 
in the school system but to be sidelined they want to, cut it to, to try and combine music and visual arts classes together and give preference to mathematics science and uh, the usual you know and, uh, and German language uh, so it's always had to defend itself in educational platforms that there is a place because it's considered to be not economically viable uh, not an economic not a not a place uh, to sustain a strong economy uh, but but an actual fact is there's some it's this other space that can't be uh, defended uh, as economically resourceful uh, as economically productive <coughs> as as profit gaining but somehow has always been managed in the last 50 years to be defended as necessary in a liberal arts education but it's always in danger so I think just as being made as a way of giving sort of a lot of sort of uh, half successful artists, well, maybe that sort of in that tone, or people who, who can't uh, survive in the free art, so-called free art market, uh, a, a position, and I suppose I feel like in some ways uh, now personally affected by this statement. Uh, I, 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 uh, I think that's not correct, actually. I think that's cynical. Does anyone else? I have a question. Yes. Uh, I would like to come back to uh, to this dentist <laughs> and uh, and the students of arts uh, because if I go to the dentist and I want to get rid of my teeth tooth, uh, probably I don't want to take away creativity from from the dentist, but probably there are two three ways how he should how they will going to do that. And uh, I just wonder like, uh, how countable there is knowledge or what kind of knowledge we produce in, in, the, in art school, how it can be countable and how it can be graded and what is actually the difference between studying arts or studying like, uh, different, uh, um, different dif disciplines. Gloria, do you have something to say? Yeah, well, I think... Um, Quite simply put, it's. Um, I, I think we should believe, and there's good reason for uh, for this belief that it um, that attending an art school is helpful for people um, to make better art well, by mean. knowing um, a couple of the things um, that people who have spent time in the fields of making in in varieties and discussing when you're um, doing your first works and your first studies and, and, and exercises simply because you are um, not such an experienced person, not necessarily much younger, um, to discuss, to, f um, f um, to direct focus of uh, what one might want to think about and at least to discuss it with um, uh, um, with a student, um, how it um, is perceived by someone with um, some more experience in the field, um, and I think there is then like like that you you um, you should be able, and this is what an art school can do, um, to um, build a certain set of sensitivities of, as Rees put it, how to communicate. Um, to potential audiences of whichever kind, um, hopefully what you are expecting to communicate or what you want to communicate. I mean, coming to the basic um, processes in art, it's, um, I guess, um, a very general maybe, but some kind of description. There's some kind of like, like inner form and then um, there is this whole difficult um, process of like producing an outer shape of it, mm. be but it in painting, be it in writing, be it in, in but moving. But then what would be the difference? Because we could make an agreement, since you're more hmm. experienced in arts than I am, I invite you and, uh, for the residency and we spend time together and uh, we can also go through the same process because I'm, I'm not so sure uh, but it is when you invite the guest professors guest, guest teachers are you looking at the at the degree that these people are having or the experiences and what they can offer as a as a practice or both is it important that the person that you invite that has a, a master master degree can you invite somebody who does not have a master but has amazing practice? Oh, uh, can I say something? 
Yeah. You know, you, we have this thing called money, you know, still. Bitcoin maybe is coming, but maybe not. But we have this thing called money. So on this thing, I promise to pay bearer the value of this. Right? So this is a symbolic piece of money that we all agree because we all spend it and share it. And if you lose it, you freak out. So uh, that it stands for a certain amount of work, no? time. That I've done something mm -hmm. to, to earn that money. Or I've been clever enough to invest it. Or, you know, let's not get into the whole capitalist thing now. But sort of, I've done it. A degree is similar, it functions in a similar way. It's a symbol, uh, an abstract reduction to stand that this person has put a lot of time no? and time and energy and uh, exchange into this thing we call a degree. No? So it's a degree. It doesn't, they didn't take it. Uh, it had, people had to go and spend time to get it. They had to sort of do, go through various uh, hoops to get <coughs> this thing. At the end you get this thing called a degree. It's like a, like a hundred dollar euro thing. It has some value. Whether that value is who acknowledges that, that value is kind of up, is a question of negotiation. Right? So, uh, so in the money thing, we kind of all accept that this is this valuable unless we go to another country and then the, the negotiation begins and say, is this as much work in your country as my country, whatever. So if you're going to play the same thing back to an educational system, you say, okay, is this degree is worth as much as that degree or whatever, whatever. And so I come back to your dentist. I think the dentists are creative. <laughs> Because I know they are, no, I don't want to defend the dentist per se, because they're never the same, you know. I don't have the same treatment every time. They go, mm, maybe I'll do it like this, maybe I'll do it like this, we could do this, we could do that, we do that. So I'm not always entirely safe with the dentist because I think maybe I'd go to this one rather than that one because their way of doing it is more interesting and more there. But the one thing that's clear at the end, I don't want a toothache. I don't want a toothache. Yeah. So that's really clear. In an art world, we say, I want to be an artist. It's not as clear as not wanting a toothache. So in this kind of um, in, um, academic scientific world, the goals are maybe a little bit at the, f at the surface, the first level, easier to identify as saying, I want an artwork. You know, I, I don't want a toothache, or I want my tooth out, or I want a filling. Uh, so coming back to that, so what the idea of this who grades, I think, again, Mike, I come, I'll put it back to everybody here. Why do we have a grading? You know, grading is simply, there, there are a couple of things around grading. When I started SODA, I was totally against grading, and I've become now an apostle of this stuff, uh, for very strange reasons, because it costs, causes a lot of aggravation and, and, and uh, heartache and, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, unpleasantness. I try and see it as a positive thing. The grading in the university system is, provides a funnel, you know? It's a funnel because a lot more people want to do these things than their availability. Huh? So there's, uh, so people say, oh, we have to have some way to be able to allow um, people to do this. Whether this is right or not is another question. But say, if you want to be a doctor, there's a certain amount of, there's a numerous classes. You have to get in a certain grade because they think uh, you won't be able to manage the course unless you have this amount of intelligence. I'm not saying it's right. So there is a percept, there are only a few amount of jobs for doctors. So that it's, and if everybody wants to be an artist, we can't survive as an economy in that sense. So only a few people will be able to be paid or to be an artist. And so how do we decide who gets in and who gets out? That grading is this kind of system. Grading is an attempt to channel that. So if you don't have that, right, if you don't have recognition, qualification, and uh, especially not art education, but if you go to any other sort of uh, technical university, it, this is a uh, grading is to establish an order of preference who gets in, who gets out. If you take away this, what do you have? How do you get people in and out? Who, who decides who gets to do it and who gets not? That's a question. Uh, yeah. uh, I'd say the new socialist I government, but um, I would ask if uh, anyone else has anything to add. To, to respond to that, we have a short amount of time left in the segment, so I'll ask someone from um, the from the audience and um, invite I, you to respond. I, I, not to respond, but I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. May I? Or yeah, yes, yeah, a question can be a response. The, 
Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering, like, um, he, uh, for his and Florian, and then also like for uh, uh, Make in, uh, in another uh, sense. Um, when you propose like that an institution is also a space to open and to share experiences and to change, um, to exchange um, um, things. Uh, and I, I, I mean, from my experience here, I, I, I kind of like understand what you're saying because I, I, I think I somehow witness um, you um, doing that. I'm wondering if, like, in your in this attempt that you that you have been doing, if was um, uh, at any moment you felt that you couldn't make this um, because of the institution. So imagine that you wanted to create a space in order to develop um, a certain set of experiences. But then the institution, I don't know, the Ministry of, of Education or the, um, I don't know, the boss of, um, I don't know, DECA or whatever. Um, so yeah, so feel framed by the, the institution. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, Leah then also had her hand up. And then just because we've got to wrap up this section, maybe we'll just keep it to one minute responses. One minute response. Not the, oh, you can ask, you can pose the question, but then... Oh, I'm composing a question now. Or, or make a comment, if you like. Well, I mean, it's such, as Rhys was saying, it's a very complex topic, and we have a very short amount of time to speak about it in. But grading and institutions and the education of art, I mean, in my understanding of art in its many forms, it's expression and we're all ultimately our own teachers, so I believe that an institution is just a specific structure within the structure of the world itself that um, facilitates conversations amongst the select people that got chosen for the masters, which is quite an eclectic group. And this is very interesting, as Make was saying, the interaction and the relations that you have with your peers. But it's just one specific framework because outside of the institution we have other peers that exist in the other areas of our life and um, I believe in relation to uh, credentials and quality I mean we are dealing with performance so we're we're in the university to study and to research and to better ourselves to reach a master's level but in the world of theatre itself and performance I mean when people go to see a performance they don't know what degrees the person on the stage has got and beauty is in the eye of the beholder so credentials I mean some people have a piece of paper but it doesn't actually make them the most tantalizing person to uh, spend your 25 euros on when you're going out on your Saturday night or your Thursday night or whatever night you decide to go to the <laughs> theatre I mean yeah thank you Liam. Um, uh, so yeah, any short responses to uh, the question or the comment? Um, we'll also be, uh, there's another, there's more points coming up, so we, uh, we're not closing down the discussion here. Like, um, what pops, what have popped out, out of this, like, um, round of um, dialogue? I, I think it's very interesting to catch up on the, um, the idea of better art and like what is better art, what, uh, who judges what better art is, who has the position of um, validating certain art, or who, who has not the position to, to validate certain art. And because the, the, the idea itself, the, the idea of art itself, it's, it's very shaped by class, and very shaped by gender, and very shaped like by um, social structure so I really think that it's quite difficult not to be thinking on a very normative way of what we are supposed to look out as art here so like coming in my in my personal case coming from a different context I think that the validation for what art is is quite different and so how to step out of this box of a very, uh, since we are a very diverse group in Soda and we come from very different nationalities, I think it's crucial to think um, in different ways to approach what art is and question who's able to say what, uh, what are the aesthetics we are aiming for and why are we coming with this, with this? because I think it's, uh, it's something that we are lacking in, in every educational system uh, in the world, I think, like how to empower yourself 
to believe in yourself and not like even like with grading it can be so tricky you can say I don't care about grading but then you care <laughs> and then you can get like very in your head why why is this like this who is grading me and why is this like this oh no I should be like more more this or that and you start like uh, me myself I start questioning some things but then it's like okay coming back to the point of why why I chose to do this even when I know that the that the market is so uh, reckless you know like it's you every time that is possible so how to say I want I, I love my work and I won't do it for free <laughs> you know like um, because we we all know that we are able to do some things for free but how how to say no now I I want to kind of um, be economically independent and I think this is very interesting for me at this point I imagine um, I want to leave you with a few questions who are you selling your art to why are you selling it and why should they buy it uh, <laughs> why, uh, okay but uh, at this point this is the breaking point and I'd like to introduce the worms